We come now to our time in the service where we um, prepare our hearts to confess our sin. <clears throat> and our, con- our passage, uh, we actually have two passages this morning. One from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 through 25, which says, Let us hold fast <clears throat> the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And then the second passage is from Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. Be- beware, brethren, lest there be any, in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. <clears throat> So our exhortation this morning is about exhortation. It's about exhorting one another. I'm exhorting you, uh, scripture is exhorting you to exhort one another. So what does that mean? Well, to start, we need to dispel the modern um, lie that the Christian religion is primarily an individual religion, one in which your membership to any particular body of believers is irrelevant so long as you have been personally saved. <clears throat> this is a lie, and it's a scheme of the devil to separate the sheep from the flock and ultimately from the sh- good shepherd himself. There's an there's a expression attributed to the third century church father Cyprian, outside of the church there is no salvation, um, in Latin extra ecclesia nulla salus. And the fact, and, and in fact, this, this quote is dogma in, in Roman Catholic Church and in the Eastern Church. Um, but, our own, but even Calvin, for instance, says, beyond the pale of the church, no forgiveness of sins, no salvation can be hoped for. And Luther says it, I'll read a little longer quote from Luther. Therefore, he who would find Christ must first find the church. How should we know where Christ and his faith are, were if we did not know where his believers are? And he who would know anything of Christ must not trust himself nor build a bridge to heaven by his own reason. He must go to the church, attend and ask her. Now the church is not wood and stone, but the company of believing people. One must hold to them and see how they believe, they live and teach. They surely have Christ in their midst. For outside of the church, outside of the Christian church, there is no truth, no Christ, no salvation. In other words, Christianity is a team sport. You were baptized into Christ and his body, the church. The first passage we considered from Hebrews uh, chapter 10 tells us to, quote, hold fast the confession of our hope, to consider one another in order to stir up love and good works by, number one, not forsaking the assembling together of ourselves, and number two, uh, by exhorting one another. So how do we hold fast to our confession of hope and stir one another up to good works? By regularly assembling and by exhorting one another. Gathering and exhorting go hand in hand. So what does exhorting mean here? Does this mean we should all be delivering many sermons to one another? What, is, what does it mean to exhort one another? Well, the Greek uh, verb in this passage, the word that's used here, <clears throat> is, is parakalite. That may sound familiar to some of you. It's the verb form of the noun um, that Jesus uses when he describes the Holy Spirit, when he says, quote, but the helper, the paraclete, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So the word for helper uh, that Christ uses is paraclete. It's also translated as advocate or comforter. So paraclete is the noun form of the verb paraclete, which is, the, which is translated as exhort here in these two passages from Hebrews. So then when we're being instructed to exhort one another uh, in Hebrews, to paracalite one another, we are being instructed to, do the, to daily do the work of the Holy Spirit in one another's lives, exhorting, encouraging, advocating, comforting, convicting of sin, and helping in the faith. We're being told to have one another's back. So I want to encourage you, in light of Hebrews, 
to reconsider the purpose of our fellowship here at church. Yes, it should be pleasant. There's nothing, no, there's nothing wrong with talking about football, the weather, or Babylon B, or whatever it is. But ultimately, if we're obeying uh, the instructions here in, in Hebrews, then our fellowship with one another needs to also be helpful. It should stir one another up to love and good works. This exhorting of one another um, it is a big deal. The author of Hebrews goes on in, in, in Hebrews 3 to warn us of the grave danger to our souls um, that is there if we neglect this vital work of, of continually exhorting one another. Here's, here's that passage from he- Hebrews 3 again. Beware, brethren, lest there be any of you with an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So if we neglect this work of exhorting one another daily, then we risk developing an evil heart of unbelief, departing from the living God and becoming hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Our continued faithfulness and obedience to God depends in large part on the faithfulness of our fellow believers to exhort us daily so that our hearts don't grow hardened to sin and we deceive ourselves and drift away from God. So it's clearer now, right, why, why Luther says something like, outside of the church, there is no truth, no Christ, no salvation. Our Christian duty to exhort one another is a serious responsibility. So quickly, how should we do this? Here are a few quick um, suggestions. One is attend worship regularly, and that's what Hebrews tells us to do. Be exhorted by God and receive, and receive that exhortation with a broken and contrite heart. <clears throat> be here in church and be ready to receive God's exhortation. The second is gather together frequently with uh, the believers. So get together with other members of the body often enough that you will actually know how to exhort them, right? Um, we don't want to just um, um, give kind of general exhortations. We want to actually know people. So how many members of this church do you know well enough that you'd be able to tell if something wasn't right? That something like you, you see them and, and, and you know I, know, I know that person and I can tell something's not right. Um, that We need to know each other that well. We can't exhort one another if we don't know each other well. So spend enough time with the brethren that you actually know what's going on in each other's lives and that you would actually feel comfortable talking to them about serious things and not just surfacey things. We can't expect to be an effective helper to one another if we don't know what one another needs. And spend enough time with the brethren that they would trust that your exhortation is, is sincere and not just you being a busybody. You have to have money in the bank, in other words, before you can start trying to write checks. And of course, you can't have this kind of relationship with everybody in the church, right? And so this is one of the reasons why we have parishes at this church. We're trying to facilitate the development of closer relationships with people who live close to you. So that's one way. The third way, just to to apply this, um, this exhortation, is to speak with care and intentionality and wisdom. So none of us needs to hear more empty out of context, Hallmark card, you know, Bible quotes, and meaningless Christianese from one another, okay? Um, you know, God bless you, brother, I'll be praying for you. You know, just the, the kind of stuff that we say. Um, it's frequently just careless rattle, you know, it, it's just, we're just carelessly rattling off biblical sounding encouragement that's, that's empty and confusing. What we need are brothers and sisters who actually know us and who love us and who are willing to speak the truth to us in love This requires that all of us be thoughtful, that we study the word, that we're in prayer regularly. And if you feel led to encourage or to exhort someone, in general, it's a good idea uh, to to have prayed about it, to have thought about it, to have studied the issue before you do so. And so in summary, the exhortation this morning is that there should not be a day that passes when you are not exhorting your brothers and sisters in Christ. As Hebrews says, while it is called today, Exhort one another, lest anyone be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin.